Welcome to my channel, Canyon Tune, and you are tuning in probably because you have vacuum leaks on your vehicle. I'm going to show you a quick way to be able to diagnose and figure out exactly where that leak is coming from because if you go unchecked, it could actually lead to engine damage and eventually engine failure. Okay, so let's start off with what a vacuum leak actually is. Your engine is essentially a giant air pump. It's sucking in air, combusting it, and it's going out the exhaust. So on that intake stroke, the piston is drawing in air from outside, and it doesn't care where it draws the air in from. Usually the air is drawn in through the intake track. So if you locate your air box where your air filter is, you'll see a mass airflow sensor, and then you'll see a tube going into potentially your intake manifold and then into your engine. Your mass airflow sensor's job is to meter how much air is actually coming into the engine so it can correctly figure out how much fuel it's going to also mix with that air that's coming in. If there's any air escaping between the mass airflow sensor in your engine or being sucked in from the engine in some other place besides through the front from the car, then technically that is a vacuum leak. Now, there could be various places where it comes from. Uh, you could have gaskets in between uh, your cylinder head and manifold that are bad. There could be potentially old hoses or rubber hoses that have deteriorated and you have a leak. Um, sometimes it will come in through your brake booster. Could be a lot of different places where it comes from. And today I'm gonna show you how to test that pretty easily. First thing you're gonna need is a basic air compressor. You really want one with a air regulator on it. We're gonna be pressurizing the system and we don't wanna go too crazy with it, maybe like five PSI to figure out where the leak is. So in order to regulate that, you need a regulator on them. Most air compressors come with that. You're also gonna need one of these. It just blows air and potentially with a tapered rubber piece on the end of it, a rubber glove, and depending on the size of your intake, we'll go over that in a minute, you're gonna need a different size glove. It may be too small or too big. So find your size accordingly and kind of go from there. I got these from Harbor Freight, the nine mil thick ones, and they're pretty heavy duty and should hold up to the air pressure that we're gonna pump into the system. Before we get into the actual diagnosis, there are a number of symptoms that you can look for to see if your vehicle is having a vacuum leak. So the most common thing is if you have a newer vehicle, you'll see check engine code such as bank one or two too lean, mass airflow plausibility codes. You could see emissions or evap related codes and some actual drivability symptoms are a rough idle, a high idle, or when you're just giving the car gas, it wants to hesitate, and then once you actually push through that, the car runs fine. If you have any of those symptoms, you're gonna want to perform this test. Okay, first thing you wanna do is locate your throttle body. It's usually going to be um, after your air box, after your mass airflow sensor, follow that back and it's going to look something like this. Okay, I've already done this step, but you're going to take your rubber glove, stretch it over that opening, and then take the clamp that was on the intake boot and put it over the top, tighten it just a little bit so you don't damage the glove so the glove doesn't fall off when we pressurize the system. That way it's completely sealed now and we can see where else the air is actually escaping from. So the easiest spot to pressurize your system is locate your brake booster. Normally you'll see this reservoir with a dot three or four uh, cap on it, and then you'll see a big brake booster and then a line coming off of it. Take that line off, and that's where we're going, we're going to actually pressurize the system. In my case, I don't actually want to pressurize the PCV system. So I'm actually going to um, send my air into the system from a different location. Okay, next we're going to turn our regulator down, down to about eh, five or 10 PSI, or pretty much as low as you can go on your air compressor. So this is the air pressure in the tank. 
and this is how much air is gonna actually flow out of the hose. Okay, we got our air line hooked up to that hose that I showed you before, and we're just pumping a little bit of air in there just to pressurize the system. You can see that my glove has kind of aired up a little bit. Um, this is a good indication of if you do have any leaks. So if I were to pull this off, you can kind of cap that off and see how fast, you know, the air is escaping somewhere from your system. At this point, if you found your leaks by hearing air escaping somewhere, great. Then you don't have to really do this step, but if it's a very small leak, you're gonna wanna take a spray bottle with some soapy water and start spraying on some suspect areas where you think the leak might be happening. And if it starts bubbling up, that's where you know the leak is. Okay, so after about half an hour of thoroughly looking over all the connections, I ended up capping off the mass airflow sensor with the glove and testing this portion to see if that was leaking because I kind of brushed that off to the side and didn't think it would leak. But if I spray some soap on here, you could see that it is in fact leaking at this connection. So that's what a leak's gonna look like. So I just need to tighten this clamp and then we should be good. So again, if left untreated, um, this can cause a lot of engine damage, including running too lean, burning out valves, um, you know, causing detonation. It could also, you know, have the car have bad gas mileage. So make sure you take care of these things. And if this does fix your issue and you found a leak, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd greatly appreciate it and see you guys in the next one.